Guys, guess what month it is? It's anime! Hello everyone, my name is Derek, and this month on the Netflix Know How, it's all anime, all the time. I am a huge fan of anime, and unfortunately I don't really get enough time to watch nearly as much of it as I would like to, so this month I am going to be bringing you all of the anime goodies, and we're going to kick things off with the big boy himself, the king of them all, Godzilla! <laughs> Now Godzilla has a very special place in my heart. I grew up watching Godzilla movies, I destroyed little block cities with all my Godzilla toys. Godzilla was and still is the man and he is awesome. At least when the Japanese are handling him. I'm not really sure why American movie studios can't seem to wrap their heads around what makes him so badass, but... Uh. Anyway, me and a friend of mine were talking movies a few months back, and he sort of idly mentions that there is a new Godzilla movie out on Netflix, an anime movie. What? How did I miss this? It's got Godzilla, it's got anime, how could this have possibly slipped underneath my radar? And that brings us to Godzilla, Planet of the Monsters. From what I'm aware, Planet of the Monsters is going to be the first film in a planned trilogy of anime films, although I'm not entirely sure when the subsequent films are going to be released yet. The movie follows a group of alien and human survivors who have been drifting through space after Godzilla decided to be a jerk and go and run everyone off of planet Earth. So now it's been like... I don't know, something like 200,000 years or whatever that have passed on Earth since they left the planet, and they've decided to go back to see if Godzilla is still alive, or if hopefully he has finally died off so that they can go back and start civilization over again. Spoiler alert, he's still very much alive and kicking. They get back to Earth, and of course they have to try and kill Godzilla because, well, if I had a giant green fire-breathing lizard monster running around in my house, I'd probably want it gone too. So that's the plot. It's a little bit different than previous entries in the Godzilla franchise, which is definitely saying something for a movie franchise that regularly features a giant three-headed lightning dragon and a huge overgrown moth fighting it out over the skyscrapers of Tokyo. That's not to say it's a bad plot, it's just a lot more serious post-apocalyptic sci-fi that I'm used to from these kinds of films. It just might take a little more getting used to the really serious, gritty, and hopeless tone of this movie as compared to some of the earlier, campier stuff that Godzilla fans like myself are more used to. I think once you adjust to that tone though, it's actually a pretty refreshing take on the series. I really liked the animation style for this film, for the most part at least. It's animated in that pseudo 3D CGI anime look, which gives it this really clean, crisp video game cutscene look, and I think it does a good job to help accentuate this futuristic sci-fi designs and elements of the film. It's not a style that particularly works for everything, but I do think it works best in sort of that futuristic space look where there's lots of metal and armor and just sort of shiny smooth things to put it on, and so I think the decision to use this style for this film was a good one. However, the monsters and Godzilla himself just look god awful. There's just something off about them. like. They don't really fit stylistically into the world that they're put into. It almost looks like they took a raisin, and then they modeled all of the monsters and Godzilla after this shriveled up piece of lumpy fruit, and then when they went to release the movie, they forgot to render the, all of the monsters and Godzilla properly, and so their textures and everything just don't really mesh or blend in with any of the backgrounds or the stuff that they put them in. Guys, it's a Godzilla movie! His name is in the title! Why does he look so bad? It basically looks like a really bad Photoshop job. That's the easiest way to explain it. But outside of that, the mix of 2D anime coloring and 3D modeling actually does look quite good, and it's pretty visually impressive, especially during some of the higher octane action scenes. Now, the main character... <sighs> the main protagonist is named Haruo Sakaki, and he has some... issues. Son of a bitch, Paul, why didn't you just go home? That's your home! Are you too good for your home? Answer me! He's angry. Like, absurdly angry. Like, angry to the point where I cannot take him seriously on any level. 
Now, the reason he's so angry is because he's really, really pissed off at Godzilla for forcing all of them off of Earth, and he just wants to go home and get revenge against the stupid monster because, you know, getting into fisticuffs with a giant, indestructible, fire-breathing lizard is clearly going to be a winning fight. Now, I would be fine with this, but the problem with his motivation is that literally everyone was forced off of Earth, and yet for some reason, he is the only one that is having this ridiculous overblown temper tantrum about it. And it's not like they didn't try fighting off Godzilla before they left the Earth, they did. Really, really hard. But I mean, you know, you're fighting against Godzilla, what are you gonna do? It makes Haruo come off as less of a sympathetic character and more of like, this really angsty teenager who is mad because his family had to move and he didn't want to, so now he just spends all of his time being really passive aggressive and dramatic and super broody. This is the character that we get to spend 90 minutes with. It's just some emotionally charged brat on a rebellious kick who is constantly getting everyone into trouble and putting everyone in danger because whatever, he does what he wants. And it's not like he's this woefully misunderstood character. Everyone understands him because literally everyone suffered the exact same trauma as him. So it just makes him come off as a jerk. He is unbearable, yes. But because he's so over the top angsty and broody and just dramatic all the time, it makes him kind of unintentionally hilarious. And I guess that could kind of be seen as his one saving grace, even though I know for a fact that's not really what they were going for with this character. Haruo also has this alien friend and their relationship is so weird. Their relationship basically boils down to the alien friend fawning over Haruo all the time like he's the second coming of Jesus, except if he thought Jesus was really sexy and wanted to bang him. I promise I'll be good to you and keep you warm at night. Jesus, 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 why don't we just shut off the light? I don't know, maybe I'm just misinterpreting the social constructs of alien culture, but uh, I'm just telling you like I see it. I have no idea why there's this weird sexual undertone between Haruo and his alien friend, and the film doesn't really offer any sort of explanation for it either. I think what they were trying to do is include a character that has a deep level of respect and admiration for Haruo's convictions when everyone else thinks that he's clearly unstable and crazy, but the problem is it just kind of comes off feeling like a schoolboy crush. Now I don't have anything against that, it's not offensive or anything, it's fine, it's just, it feels like this is not at all what they were intending to accomplish with this character dynamic. The relationship just felt kind of awkward and out of place, kind of like when you accidentally put a t-shirt on backwards. It functions, sure, but it's not really fitting the way it's supposed to. I was also pretty disappointed with the overall story. Not like I was expecting like this grand emotional dramatic masterpiece from a Godzilla film of all things, but even then, the plot just still felt incredibly dumbed down and simple. They go back to Earth, they fight some monsters, they fight Godzilla, and then there's a twist at the end, but it's not like the good kind of exciting twist, it's just like the kind of twist that says, hey look, now we get to make more movies out of this. Nothing super interesting or exciting happens, which is really a disappointment because this concept was so cool and they could have done some really awesome things with it to explore some new elements and breathe some really fresh new life into this 60 year old franchise. There are some hints at some cool new ideas, but they don't really go anywhere with them, at least not yet. If anything, the film feels kind of like the pilot episode for a TV series, which would be fine if it were a pilot episode for a TV series, but it's not, it's a movie. It needs to be able to stand on its own merits regardless of the fact that it's going to be connected to a planned trilogy. And on that front, it just, it really doesn't. It doesn't have its own strong two feet to stand on. It comes off feeling like a 90 minute teaser trailer for the stuff that we actually want to see happen. On top of that, 
there isn't even that much Godzilla in this movie. I mean, I get that the premise is that, you know, they're going back to Earth after a really long time, and so they don't know whether Godzilla is there or not, so they're trying to build up this big sense of mystery and suspense for the big reveal. But he's like barely in it. He's in it for maybe like, I don't know, 15 minutes? There's at least twice as much talk about Godzilla and how badass and scary he is, and then he's barely in the movie at all. It's such a letdown. I was really disappointed with this movie because I love Godzilla and I love anime and so when I was informed that this movie existed I was super excited to see these two elements put together and there's just nothing there. Godzilla Planet of the Monsters ends up being just kind of a dried up husk of a movie that is really only there to buy time and provide you some snacks until the full mill arrives later on. Thumbs down. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. So yeah, this is the thing I've been planning for a while now. Um, I hope you guys like anime, and even if you don't, maybe I will introduce you to some things that you might like. Uh, anime is great, it's gonna be awesome. I'm really looking forward to doing this month. It's gonna be a good time for everyone, I hope. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm sorry to start this month off on kind of a low note with a thumbs down for the Godzilla movie. I was just, I was hoping it would be better than it is, and it's just, it was disappointing. It's not awful, just, you know, for what it could have been, it was it was just not great. Anyway, um, once again, thank you. Uh, if you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and share it with all your friends. I would really super appreciate that. You can also head over to Twitter and over to Facebook and follow me on there. And as always, if you wanna know your flicks, you know where to click. Happy hunting, guys. I'll see you next time.